What Fossils Reveal About Hybridization of Early Humans. This is by Jana Eberhardt, University of Tübingen on FIS.org. Many people living today have a small component of Neanderthal DNA in their genes, suggesting an important role for admixture with archaic human lineages in the evolution of our species. Paleogenetic evidence indicates that hybridization with Neanderthals and other ancient groups occurred multiple times with our species history resembling more a network of braided steam stream than a tree. Clearly the origin of humankind was more complex than previously thought. It's essential to use multiple lines of evidence to investigate the impact of such hybridization. Ancient DNA is rarely well preserved in fossil specimens, so scientists need to recognize possible hybrids from their skeletons. This is vital for understanding our complex past and what makes us human. Professor Katarina Harvati of the Schenkenberg Center for Human Evolution and Paleo Environment at the University of Tübingen in Germany, together with Professor Rebecca R. Ackerman of the Human Evolution Research Institute at University of Cape Town, South Africa, have investigated the impact of hybridization using fossil skulls and identified individual potent hybrids in the past. Their work has been published in the journal Nature, Ecology and Evolution. Careful analysis of the data. To do this, the researchers investigated a large number of fossil remains of ancient humans from Upper Paleolithic of Eurasia, dating to approximately 40 to 20,000 years ago. Several of these individuals have yielded ancient DNA showing a small component of Neanderthal ancestry in their genes, reflecting their recent admixture with this group. Their skull bones were compared with unadmixed samples from Neanderthals and early as well as recent modern humans from Africa. The researchers examined three regions of the skull, the mandible, that's the jaw of course, the brain case and the face for telltale signs of hybridization. Quote, these might include, for example, intermediate morphology compared to Neanderthals or modern humans, dental abnormalities or unusual sizes. These are features we see in hybrids of various mammals, including primates, end quote, Harvati and Ackerman explained. Their study showed that signals of hybridization were evident in brain cases and jaws, but not in the faces. In the individuals with known genetic background, the researchers also considered whether signs of hybridization on the skeleton matched the percentage of Neanderthal ancestry. The fact that it did not suggests that the presence of particular genetic variants is probably more important than the overall proportion of Neanderthal ancestry, the researchers said. Harvati and Ackerman also identified some of the individuals studied as potential hybrids, including individuals from the Middle East, well known to be a region of contact for the groups, but also beyond in both Western and Eastern Europe. However, where possible, the individual hybrid status should be confirmed using genetic data, they said, and as such, we consider these identifications as hypotheses to be tested. This is what Harvati says. This was the first study of its kind, she says, adding that we hope this encourages researchers to look more closely at these fossils and combine multiple lines of evidence for identifying hybridization in the fossil record. Innovator of evolution. In other organisms, from plants to large mammals, hybridization is known to produce evolutionary innovation, including outcomes that are both novel and diverse. It's estimated that about 10% of animal species produce hybrids, including, for example, bovis, bears, cats, and canids. Ackerman says hybrids are also known in primates, our close relatives such as baboons, she said, because hybridization introduces new variation and creates new combination of variation. This can facilitate particularly rapid evolution, especially when facing new or changing environmental conditions. Hybridization, therefore, may have provided ancient humans with genetic and anatomical features which gave them important advantages when spreading from Africa across the world, resulting in our physically diverse and evolutionary resilient species, stated the authors. 
And this is from University of Tübingen, Germany, on FIS.org. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.